G'day guys, and today I'm going to review the game which is between Geelong and St Kilda. It was the Cats by 14 points. In the end, what a tough game it was. Uh, had some uh, some dinner plans, so I went to dinner straight after the game, and hence uh, the review is a little bit lower than I would have liked, but dinner was solid. So, yeah, um, bit of a pork roast and whatnot, so it wasn't, it wasn't too shabby. Uh, better than the game, I thought. <laughs> it was... Very, very tough. Um, yeah, to watch almost. We can see the first five goals. The Saints were absolutely red hot. You know, season on the line. Uh, it would have everything ha would have had to go absolutely perfect for them to, you know, get themselves into the eight. But obviously, they they had it within their control to try and get the win today. And um, yeah, look, I, I thought they were brilliant for a good part of the afternoon. But yeah, some some good individual brilliance by the Cats and. Steady, cool heads got the job done, and yeah, just uh, outworked the Saints sort of as the game formulated and, and transpired. So um, yeah, look, it was it was a very very dark start to the game, especially when Max King's taking clunks and I'm just you know screaming, thinking where's Blitzars? Put Blitzars on him. It didn't work last time, and you know without Stewart, you definitely got to have your absolute best defender on uh, their best forward. It makes sense to me. Um, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't make sense to Chris Scott. Eventually the move was made and I thought Blitz did a really, really good job. Obviously King had a little bit of um, bit of groin issue, but I then got a very dubious free kick uh, from a, a great sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one con contest with Blitzars, but that's all right. I don't want don't to wanna talk about that one-on-one -on -one too much. Uh, Saints were just out of the blocks early. Their pressure was unreal. It was oh, the gauge was over two hundred in the first term, and I think the Cats was about one seventy. So the Cats clearly, again, didn't really come out um, breathing fire, and, and we knew the Saints were going to throw absolutely everything the kitchen sink, and then some at the Cats, and they certainly did that. And um, yeah, landed the first big punch quite significantly. Kicking the first five goals, and I was thinking, gee, these are the sort of games where you know this is what this is how teams win. Like you know, the, um, not many teams are going to win at the Cattery, and if there's going to be a way, well, getting off to a great start obviously helps. Uh, doesn't guarantee the win because we know the Cats will always fight back. And credit to them, they, they were in real big trouble, and potentially another goal or two away could have maybe been too much. Um, the Cats always keep fighting back, which is really good and a great trait, but. Yeah, the Saints just slick ball movement early on uh, was really good. We didn't really, you know, come to play with them in terms of our pressure. Their pressure was you know, incredible, and they were able to, you know, move the ball really quickly. Uh, they brought the ball back in the corridor quite regularly, and they just had so many transitions where Geelong didn't really intercept uh, within the play, and we weren't able to keep up with their run. That, that's one thing that probably does trouble us at times is uh, speed on the game, which you know these teams like North and. Richmond of old, um, St Kilda, these kind of sides can really test us there, and and they certainly did, and they were, they were incredibly brave. I think it's, I, I don't know, GWS played probably one of their best games ever last week, and I feel like the Saints have played one of their, you know, I don't know, maybe the Cats aren't travelling too well, but uh, yeah, look, they did find a way, and yeah, the Saints um, just couldn't quite get it going, I suppose, in that, that third term, even though they had, I swear, three or four inside 50s and they kicked three goals. And I was just like, if Tom Stewart was out there, uh, it would have been a different story. I don't think it would have mattered too much in the first term. It might have been three goals instead of five, you know, if you have a, a Tom Stewart out there. But, uh, yeah, look, the Saints were, I suppose, um, overwhelmed in the, the third term, but somehow kicked a few goals late and it just had that uh, ugly look about it where, you know, Geelong dominated the play, they're back in, back, back in front, but they're only just, you know, just in the lead and, and then the Saints, you know, kick a goal and all of a sudden against the run of play, the Cats have absolutely demolished them, but they're only up by two points and then subsequently down. Um, but yeah, well, the Cats went to work, that's for sure. They, they brought the heat as, a, you know, as they always do. The game really wore on and and um, responded really well with a couple of you know really good goals late in that term. Some centre clearances that were vital, and obviously with six six six, you want um, you want that ascendancy up forward, and you want to get the ball in quickly and quality delivery to the forwards. It's probably something the Cats still need to work on a little bit, uh, just in terms of you know getting uh, 
some really good supply inside 50. Although the supply is not the problem, just the quality of the supply isn't where we'd like it to be. Defense looked a little bit leaky today. Uh, the inside 50 stats I'm very, very interested to look at because we don't concede a lot. But it feels like when as soon as team, teams go in there, they get easy goals from 0 to 30. I, I've seen that a bit over the last couple of weeks. I swear GWS got a lot of easy goals from 0 to 30 out, which is yeah, credit to them. But I feel like we could definitely avoid that. But I'm not coaching. I'll just, I'll just exist and talk about the cats, you know. Uh, that's what I do. But it was a good third term. Second and third term was you know, really positive And, you know, we held, held our... Um, out of our own really in the last quarter uh, a couple of you know individual bit of brilliance we were able to really get that contest back on our terms and then sort of yeah really make the saints ask them you know make them defend ask the saints the question and uh yeah some quality players up forward you know you got cameron hawkins radical ear sometimes plays all right and uh, danger up there that yeah wilkie and the and Dougal howard and these guys just sit you know great um, our supply again wasn't amazing and yeah I don't know how we don't get it to more one-on-ones and I don't know how we don't win more one-on-ones but may, maybe that's something to come out in the wash maybe we're just trying to get into finals in reasonable health without your best defender in the history of the game going uh, out for the rest of the season it looks to be but yeah credit to the Saints Jack Steele was on fire and uh, yeah really made Made it really tough work for the Cats, um, you know, getting away from the stoppages. The Saints were very brave and took it on. And But, uh, yeah, some seasoned bodies from the Cats, some cool, calm heads, and, yeah, some individual brilliance late. Um, the Saints obviously took a, a crazy risk. Uh, I think Dougal Howard, <laughs> ironically enough, kicked it across goal, and then um, Karen was able to be on the, the end of it from a really good shepherd from Narkel. So, yeah, it's... It's a it's a great win in terms of where they were coming from, um, or a great result. Probably not a great game to watch because it was just stressful from start to finish. We ten minutes to go in the, the third term, we didn't get uh, f was the first time we got in the lead, which is quite crazy. But yeah, again, uh, some a few individuals there that made this happen, and certainly not uh, the greatest team performance of all time. But some individuals really. Yeah, played out of their skin and, and were amazing today, which obviously enabled the result to go our way. That's unbelievable. We had 124 more disposals. Uh, no, 104, my bad. I got to be excited there on the mass. Uh, 400 touches. Didn't feel like we... It felt like the Saints had so much of the ball early. I reckon those, that third term and probably second half, that, that final term, definitely got on top. Jeez, only 46 inside 50s. And only 32 for the Saints. Wow. I'm, a game played between the arcs, that's for sure. Uh, and it wasn't wet conditions. I think the conditions are pretty good. Very accurate goal kicking, I must say. Um, so, you know, both sides efficient going in. 32 entries for... Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a score every second inside 50. And it definitely felt like it. Cats 46, 20. Yeah, so just under, a little bit under 50%. 50%, uh, yeah, we're good by foot, nearly 80%, that's not too bad, not too bad, considering all the pressure the Saints put us under, um, which I was really impressed that the Cats did lift in that sort of manner, and yeah, Saints' uh, defensive turnovers and our inability to keep it in our forward 50 was definitely uh, on display early, which you know, a number of goals came from uh, their defensive half, which doesn't usually happen. And they cashed in on our turnover from you know our little uh, risky kicks inside the corridor. Forgot to mention that. Yes, they were very efficient inside fifty, and we haven't been super efficient. But you know, sometimes you're efficient, sometimes you're not. Uh, around the ground, I guess we did well in the clearances, forty-one thirty, and plus five in center clearances. Did feel like the Saints were on top there. Oh, geez, that's really good plus 35 in contested possession so definitely got that really tough ball and made them pay so very nice to see one less turnover got a marking game back is that the cats average or <laughs> the teams i'd say that's the cats but yeah 111 marks you don't want the cats taking over 100 marks or in a bit of strife Contestor marks, I reckon it was four zip early the Saints way, so we definitely worked our way back into it. 16 marks inside 50 is not too shabby at all. 13 goals, 7 as a result for Geelong. Uh, that's really good to see it as well, actually. It didn't 
maybe because I was so critical in the game, but to have more of the footy and over, over 100 more possessions and more tackles in the opposition, great work rate, especially after the Saints kicked the first five goals. Tackles inside 50 was really pleasing. The pressure from the Cats, so, yeah, very pleased with. We don't take many bounces. And no Zach Tui in the side, generally the way. And interchanges were definitely uh, something that was utilised to basically 100%. All right, well, oh my goodness. These are some, some crazy numbers. I thought I had my, yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll definitely have my three votes. <laughs> Won't be subdued by the numbers. And my three votes for looking at the players this week. P. Dangerfield, what a star he was. He had 31 touches, one goal, uh, six marks, six tackles, nine clearances. He was just absolutely huge. One of, one, is, <laughs> one of Paddy's best games of the year. He was just on fire. And I reckon 24 of those at least were contested possessions. I'll have to go into the, the advanced statistics to find out that number because it was unbelievable. We had 24 contested possessions. That's just absolutely bonkers numbers. He was in and under all day and he was just excellent. Kicked that goal right at the end to win the game. Took a big mark, you know, and um, Seb Ross won't like saying that again. But yeah, look, he was just, he's absolutely brilliant best and we needed a big performance and, and he delivered. Speaking of big performances, uh, Samuel Menegola was my two votes. He just got the footy. I reckon that might be his career high, 35. Definitely doesn't mind racking up you know, around that 20, 25 mark and sometimes uh, skyrockets further and beyond. And this, I'm going to have to check after this, but I reckon that is his best uh, return disposals-wise. He kicked a goal, nine marks, a couple of tackles, got a clearance in there, always gains a lot of meterage. And what I loved about it, three goal assists and some absolute darts inside 50 when, you know, we couldn't get quality service inside 50. You just look no further than Menegola. Uh, you'd love to be, you know, big forward leading out to, to Sammy because his uh, foot skills are just absolutely superb and did a great job. He was, he was unbelievable, I thought, and very invaluable for the win. One vote to Jeremy Cameron, back in the side. You, you put Jeremy Cameron in there, you put him down the category and you pretty much bank in three plus goals. He was absolutely sensational. Yeah, four on the night and he took 13, got 13 disposals. <laughs> he didn't take 13 marks, uh, which he did, but yeah, he got the 13 touches there, seven marks and he just, he just, he just hurts you on the scoreboard. He, he doesn't, um, you know, he doesn't kick one three or... He might kick 2-2 two, two sometimes, but he just takes his chances. He just kicks darts and gets them low, and and he's just a, a great, just a great finisher. That's why we got into the club. That's why we picked, paid, you know, for three first rounders, and uh, you know the rest of our futures just gone down the toilet because we got Jeremy Cameron. But no, he's going to be great. Obviously, over the five year deal that we've got him for, uh, yeah, he was just absolutely sensational and invaluable for the win, as per my three votes. So. I thought they were pretty clear cut today. Uh, yeah, the, the three best, some might say, oh, Cam Guthrie's a bit stiff and I'll probably sometimes lean away from Cam because he gets a lot of the ball, but I don't know if it hurts you a lot. So if I was doing the Hawks reviews, I think Tommy Mitchell would hate me. Um, well, Tom Mitchell's probably one of their best players. So, well, so is Cam. Uh, I better not get into this argument with myself. Uh, but yeah, Cam was really good over the course of the afternoon. He got 36, uh, nine marks. He gained a bit more meters today, which is nice. And uh, probably my argument is Mitchell's probably one of the best around, but the Hawks don't have a lot in his wheelhouse. So that there's my logic there. But Cam would, would uh, probably hate me for never giving him votes. But oh well. See the difference here? Let's hit the scoreboard, you know, goal assists and everything. So, sorry, Cam. Um, but no, he played a really good game. He, he always gets involved and works very hard around the ground. He gets played a good game. He had 26 and sort of running around the ground, played a good game. Ceiling was good. He kicked a goal, 16 touches, 31 hitouts, uh, six clearances. He was, yeah, he was a bit of a workhorse uh, in the midfield and sort of yeah took uh, Marshall places he didn't want to be. Selwood always gets 25 plus when he plays at GMHBA. Uh, Nathan Brown's all over that one at Sportsbet. Um, yeah, he loves he loves Selwood for 25 plus when when he plays at the Cattery. And yeah, look, he was a yeah, really tough. Tried really hard throughout the day. And yeah, again, just uh, another captain's performance. 
Uh, Lockie Henderson surprised me there with 22 touches. He was he played a nice game and um, yeah, definitely gave us some good forays forward as he does. Smith gets a good goal from a great pass from Samuel Simpson. I was thinking that's not Smith. <laughs> that's the Smith. And he kicked, yeah, he kicked a goal, obviously, 22 touches. He normally racks the footy up and works hard uh, from the back line and the wings. Give the cuts a good go. And Darley has got a fair bit of the ball as well. I, I definitely felt like he, he was in a lot of contests and nine tackles. So that's that's uh, sensational. He played his role really well. And yeah, he, had, he won some really good tough contests and you know, made a, a really good fist of it. Hawkins kicked three goals next to his name. It didn't really feel like he kicked three, but I guess he snapped one off the ground and <laughs> could have been a free kick to uh, Jack Steele, mind you. Only snapped one around the corner after a mark and then, yeah, kicked one. Yeah, so it didn't really feel like he played that well, but uh, look, he did end up with three. And he loves a bit of a hitter as well, does Thomas. Jack Henry, he got 17 touches, eight marks. Didn't feel like it felt like he was a bit overawed by King, and I mean he's a he's becoming a star, uh, Max King. Uh, but yeah, Henry looked he did he did well all considering. Uh, Zach Guthrie loves a kick and took six marks as well. A lot of these marks must be cheap because it didn't feel like they were coming from the Saints uh, so often. Holmes was solid at home for the Cats, seventeen touches, three marks. He was um, running and dashing and doing a decent role for the team. O'Connor worked his way into the match. I think he was playing down back and sort of wing. I think he might have been playing the Zach Tui role. He was okay in his game back. A lot of Saints um, around the mark of Marcus O'Connor. That might be why they lost, potentially. Close was good. He loves a handball. I reckon he's going to have more handballs than Tom Mitchell by the end of his career. Uh, he kicked a goal, though. It was a great mark as well, a great contested mark. And, again, that, that good forward pressure there. I'm going to guess that's tackles. That could be marks. Yeah, these tackles, very good. So what's that, 12? Yeah, that makes sense, 12 tackles. Um, so 13 tackles from the two small fours. That's great. That's what we want to see. That uh, is what is going to help you win some big games. Blitzarves was good down back. I felt that King was, whilst he had his injury, uh, was able to nullify him. When he was placed onto him, and I think Blitzarves should play on the best key forward every week uh, to give the Cats the best chance because we've seen Charlie Dixon and these other, you know, uh, McLean, <laughs> these other guys kicking bags against us, which just never happens uh, with key forwards, but apparently has been. Bit of a feature this year, uh, no Harry Taylor, he's been a, a sorely misplayer. But, you know, we're, we're an improving team. Uh, Parfit, I oh, didn't really like his game, he had a few tackles, but he doesn't doesn't get a lot of the ball, we still absolutely demolished him, and he doesn't use the ball well in side 50, so he's definitely played better games. I'll give Parfit a fair bit of a whack, um, he's probably good structurally for the team, but numbers don't speak great volumes. Buse has been racking up a fair bit of the footy of late. Um, yeah, really liked his run and dash, and he's really good at evading tackles, which is you know, quite a skill set to have and um, definitely definitely beneficial for the team. Uh, Collar Jasney had nine. Is that any marks? Four marks? Five marks? Five marks for Collar. He's, uh, he's, had, a, he's had a solid year, I reckon, Collar. He's, he's done all right. Sav so Radigali played a little bit in the ruck. Uh, I'm going to six hit outs. Just not enough impact for mine, and he's right down the bottom. And once Rowan's fit, I hope he's back in because uh, you, you can't play Radigali, Rowan, and Hawkins and Cameron. It's a bit too much going on. Narkle, I don't think he. Oh, he registered something. It might be four meters. <laughs> it could be four meters gain. Let's have a look at that. Time on ground, that makes sense, four percent. He didn't get a stat, but he had a couple of really good shepherds in contest. But that's not on the stat sheet. Uh yeah, so that's a bit of a look at to this week's game and we'll go a bit of a look at uh next week's game at top. Could be top four, top two clash. Probably would decide a little bit of the top one, two, three, and four. I I would imagine uh, the cats at team HBA once again up against the demons. Um, I don't know. I feel like this is going to mean more to Melbourne for some strange reason. I feel like the Cats will will just not take it as seriously. I, I don't know why I think that, but not that it'll be a dead rubber, but top four might not mean a heck of a lot. 
they probably don't want to play Port Adelaide uh, over there, depending on where the finals are going to be played at. Uh, it's going to be very interesting indeed where it's going to be, if it will be in Queensland or if it will just be in Adelaide or neutral ground over in the West, uh, minus the West Coast Eagles. But, yeah, um, the Cats would probably want to finish top two, but they can't drop out of the four now. So that's why today's game was so critical to get the win because if they don't win, they lost two in a row and then looking shaky without Tom Stewart going into a Melbourne game that all of a sudden could drop out of the top four and undo all their great work throughout this season. So, yeah, um, that was a very, very handy win today. I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I, a few weeks back, I would have gone, yeah, cool Geelong, but <laughs> lots of the Giants at home and looking a bit shaky. No Tom Stewart, and Tom Stewart's a big reason why I'm not as confident. But Jeremy Cameron, you know, back in... We we score a lot better when he's in the side because he's he's a great forward and we obviously move the ball better. I mean, he's uh yeah he's a very hard worker, no doubt about that, and takes the pressure off Tom for sure. But yeah, I, th I just I know I just have some strange feeling the demons will, will get the job done. I mean, Geelong don't a lot of the teams Geelong play aren't you know top four, and I think yeah I don't know after losing the Giants I. We generally lose a game a year at GMHPA anyway and might have been the one we needed to have. Uh, but yeah, I'm not feeling super confident going into that game. Well, I'll just put it that way. But yeah, what a game it was. It would have been great for a neutral. Um, stressful for a Cats fan and Saints fan, I'd say, because uh, Saints you know, give themselves a chance to make it into the eight. But the Cats got the chocolates and um, so up a top four spot, which is great. Takes uh, a little, little bit of the pressure off next week. Still would want to, you know, play some decent footy no doubt about that we don't want to do a rossi line and you know rest half the team but um yeah i don't think it'll be any pre-finals buys uh worries this time around and i'm sure scotty will be happy with that to an extent uh obviously duncan and two we probably wish it, there was so win some you lose some but uh cats got the job done at gmhba i would have been super super annoyed we just in geelong are, you know top two top four uh, losing to the Saints for the first time since 1999 at, at Kidinia Park would have been yeah, very frustrating because you tend to not tend to keep those records when you're playing really well and when a side's struggling to make the eight. Uh, that's not when you want to drop those records. So and we wouldn't have played too many games at uh, Kidinia Park, but haven't won there since 99 and Cats keep uh, winning and only one loss at KP this year so far. So. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe, away, hit the bell, all that great stuff. Share it around to all your friends and family, colleagues, associates, um, yeah, partners and whatnot. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, guys. Uh, take care, and I'll see you on the next video.